It's safe to say that some of the comments on yesterday's video were a little bit scathing of the tactical system. I feel like people were panicking more than I was in many ways. And ultimately, having had a difficult run of games, we had an easier run of games coming up. Now, the good news is the ship is kind of steadied. The bad news is Man City aren't bloody losing many games. Yeah, the only time they've lost is against us. They have 53 points after 20 games. We're 13 points behind them. We're in second. And well, it's for that reason I'm back here today. Man City away in the league. Lose this game. They're 16 points clear of us. We have one game in hand. That isn't going to make a difference. A win here, though. Maybe we can rock them. Maybe we can put them on the back foot. That's certainly the aim. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Parks of Brem. Since last episode, we've played a whole lot of Football Manager. I will point out immediately, yes, we did lose to Nottingham Forest. We will talk about that shortly, but there are, as you can perhaps see elsewhere, some pretty blooming good results. Now, of course, last episode, we had a defeat against Chelsea, followed by the win against Wolves. And like I said, I wasn't going to overreact too much. I think ultimately, when you look at our start to the year, we did have a very, very good start to the season. We'd only lost two games, and it was at Chelsea away and Manchester United away. Two games that are always going to be difficult in FM, and I was hopeful that with a run of winnable games, we'd be able to get some wins. We have managed to do that. You can see here, following on from the game against Wolves, we beat Club Bruges 5-2. That was a good little result there. Um, some people did mention, Jack, Club Bruges away day. I did it last year in Parks of Brem. Go watch last year's series if you know, you've know not watched it. It's, it's bloody good content, I think. Our final game for the month of November was this one here against Leicester City. Good little result. Dexter Sneddon in the team. Lots of rotation needed. NDIA was still injured. Diop went off in it with an injury. And I'll let you know now, the injuries have not let up since last episode. And I suppose that's not entirely surprising when you see how full our schedule has been through the month of December. 4-0 against Aston Villa was great. 3-1 against Leeds United, a good result too. We then took on Victoria Plazen in the Champions League. We beat them 6-0. And with that, we've now qualified for the next round of the Champions League. We've played six, we've won six, we've destroyed everyone, and yet we are going to be playing in the later knockout round. So job done in the Champions League, that feels good. Of course, the other cup competition we want to do well in is the EFL Cup. I was a little bit worried, should we say, going into this game. Liverpool away. I was even more worried when, despite us taking the lead in the fourth minute, we had two injuries. Celik got injured, Misiak got injured, then they drew one level. Uh, if you're wondering about the Celik and Misiak injuries, Celik is slowly coming back to fitness. Misiak, I don't think actually missed that much. Or, or did he? He might still be injured. He is still injured. Is he back yet? He's, yeah, he's still not back yet. The injuries have been mental this year. But despite those injuries, we were able to come through with a result. A game where in the first half, we started off amazingly with a goal in the first four minutes. Ultimately, a late set piece from Bailey Salmon secured the win. After that, 7-0 against Southampton was amazing. 5-1 against Newcastle was impressive. Bailey Salmon with another two there. And then Nottingham Forest... We lost 1-0 at home. Yeah, it's our first home defeat in many a year. It came against Nottingham Forest. If you predicted this, well done. You've played football manager. Of course, it's the teams down the bottom that ruin your home run. We look at the kind of stats in this game. We didn't create a whole lot, but I definitely think we were worth a point. I mean, look at the match momentum. That... It, yeah, you know what? I've looked at that now. That's made me more annoyed. Anyway, to end the year, we did manage to beat Sunderland 3-0. That was a good result. Roger Rojas getting two goals, including one from the penalty spot. Yet yeah, so far this year, he's two for two from pens in the Premier League. And with those results, it sets us up kind of nicely for today's episode. Now, originally, I was going to do the Man City game and then a Manchester United game. The Manchester United game has been moved might have only just noticed that. So uh, mm. I think in terms of plan, maybe we'll do kind of a recappy view of the Brentford EFL Cup semi-final games. How does that sound? We need to do well in the EFL Cup. We want to make it to the final. Might as well stop by for both of those. Now, like I already mentioned, injuries are a problemo and a half. You can kind of see that here. You can see uh, Karadag, a man who's been complaining about lack of first team football. I've given him a few games. He actually was playing quite well before he got injured. Two assists in four Premier League appearances. Two of those were starts, but yes, sadly for him, he's out for the foreseeable future. Elsewhere, slightly more important players, Alex, injured again, gave him a new contract in the summer. He's had now had three moderate injuries in, well, the space of, what, three months? It's been very, very unfortunate. Ichikawa is also out injured at the moment. He's out with the flu. That, I feel like he's just skiving. You know, he's unhappy at the club. I just, I feel like his heart's not in it right now. He's just bunking off. 
And as you already saw, Misiak is coming back from injury and Celik has passed a fitness test to play 75 minutes. Unsurprisingly, he will be playing today against Man City. Now, just as a little reminder, pre-season Man City were the favourites for the league. They have the best squad on paper and I suppose that is showing when it comes to their results. They have been near enough unbeatable this year. As I mentioned, the only team to beat them was us. That was a little while ago, wasn't it? On the opening kind of two games of the season. We did that in the opening episode. We need to repeat that today. And if you were wondering about their team, you know, Erlen Haaland, he's doing quite well. He's got 15 goals in 14 games. He's 36. And elsewhere, if you're wondering about that high standard, Daniele Pellegrino, uh, this guy, 28 years old, right back, left back, all round good guy. Uh, he's quite good, isn't he? He's disgustingly good. Um, let's, let's go to the game. Actually, before we go to the game, just to recap our team for today's game, Alex is out, so Bolton is going in at right back. Elsewhere, Anderson is playing Roman Playmaker. You might have also noticed Huari's not in the team. He's been a naughty boy. Uh, yeah, Huari's suspended for this one. Our best centre-back, unavailable. So Snedden and Salmon play alongside each other. I feel like Salmon is developing really, really well, but sometimes his lack of pace does hinder him. Hopefully Sneds is going to be able to cover. It's not often you go into a game in January thinking if you lose this, you're probably not going to win the league. Of course, Man City have drawn two, lost one in the first half of the year. It's very unlikely they're going to maintain that form for a whole season. That's kind of difficult to do. Naturally, we need to be in a position to capitalise when they do start to slip up. And if they're 16 points clear, they slip up, you draw three points closer. It doesn't really feel like you're closing the gap, does it, for a little while. But maybe we can get a rock rolling down the hill or something. You know, we're still at the top of the hill. We'll push a boulder of a defeat down there and it'll get rolling and Man City will lose a load. I feel like that was a terrible metaphor. Thank you, Football Manager, for giving me a highlight to bail me out of this situation. Of course, we are away from home here. Haaland has got a little bit of a knock. Maybe that is Bailey Salmon. You know, he's done him. Just kicked him in the shins. Unfortunately, Rico Lewis lays it to Ansu Fati. If Fonny makes a save. I'll tell you what, I talked about the fact goalkeepers don't make a difference in FM many a time. Afoni does seem to come up with some big saves. I don't think I'm just saying that either. Like, genuinely, there's big moments from the man. And well, hopefully now, we can have some big moments from the Min on the near side. Lee Min, well, I thought he was going to get the ball. Instead, it looks like we're going to be switching the play over to the other side. Michael Bolton, loads of space, loads of pace. Can he get to the byline and get something in? He puts it to Celic. It goes through everyone. Diop finishes it. The referee raises his hand. Think checking VAR for offside here. The linesman didn't raise his flag. The linesman didn't raise his flag. Is it going to count? The answer is yes. And that is a really, really big goal. Uh, this cross by Bolton was not great, was it? It was a bit of a pee roller of a cross. I think it caught everyone out by the nature of the fact it rolled around. Chelik went down in a heap. I think he was dummying it. And Diop, they're at the back post. Half an hour played, we're a goal up. Chelik, get us another. Why not, mate? Number 11, my goat, my hero. I mean, to be fair, he did it the target, at least. Guerrero just gave away a foul. Chelik has now got a free kick on the edge of the box. He missed one earlier. Could he score this one? No, Seedon makes another save. Okay, Lee Min, corner. He's going to be looking to whip it in. There's options here, there, and everywhere. And it goes over all of them. I mean, Salmon? No, Salmon can't keep it alive. I just noticed they're playing Seedon in goal. Seedon played against us in the Community Shield, and he's like that under-21 goalkeeper. Where are Man City's first-team goalkeepers? Like, have they got an injury crisis in goal? Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Hodgkiss is their third choice. Their first choice got injured at the start of the month. It's not started them losing games. He's out for two months, is bold, as he. He's very good, too. And then their other goalkeeper is just out on loan and unavailable. He's from Luxembourg. I mean, how have they not slipped up considering they've not had a goalkeeper for, like, the whole month? It's just annoying, isn't it? It's just annoying. I feel like we have to test their goalkeeper. We've had a few shots from range. I mean, we've had two free kicks saved. Celic, have another shot, son. Why not? I mean, the ball here is in a dangerous area, potentially. Options in the middle. Celic crosses it in. The Don was there. And the donkey is what I feel like we should bloody call him. He has been useless at centre attack in mid. Yeah, I want, I want to play it off like, oh, he'll come good. No, he is actually starting to annoy me. And I know what you're thinking, Jack, he can't be that bad. No, genuinely. I mean, look at these stats. 7.01. Three goals, five assists. Pathetic. We're a goal up at halftime. I'm still going to tell the players I'm not happy. I feel like there's room for improvement. And also, something I forgot to mention, Roger Rojas... He, he won World Player of the Year. Yeah, I don't know how he's won that either. I feel like me just saying he won it, it sounds like propaganda. It sounds like fake news. Here it is, drink in. Roger Rojas, World Player of the Year. Someone in the comments yesterday's video said that they thought I overrated him. I think he took it personally. Okay, 40 minutes left in this game. 
Stuff's happening. Things are happening. Highlights are occurring. Can we get a more important goal? I am also aware I've not mentioned the takeover or transfer stuff yet. We'll talk about that after this match. You know, hold your horses. I've got to get you on a reel. I've got the hook in your mouth. I'm reeling you in, just like Chelik is scoring goals. Dodon has assisted him as well. I never thought I'd see the day. A funny switches the play right to left. Look at that. It comes down with snow on it. The Don nods it on Chelik chest, shoots. Goal. 2-0 up away against Man City is huge. They've only lost one game this year, it was to us. They might be about to lose a second as well against us. Okay, an hour played it. We're doing well. Donald has been struggling with fitness lately. The issue I've got is, don't really have a defensive mid to bring in. I have Talarski who I could bring in, or Osse. I think I'm going to bring in Talarski, you know. I mean, the 18-year-old has started playing for the German national team. He does look quite good. I mean, not quite national team worthy, but he does look quite good. So we'll bring him in. Rojas has been poor today. Sam Faye on Yukum and Marky Anderson. You know what? Off for Neto. Neto, do some roaming and some playmaking. Okay, look, two goals up. Three goals would be nice, wouldn't it? I, I want to say at three goals, I'd start to relax. You know, you know what? Based on earlier this year, no, I probably wouldn't relax with that. But let's try and get a third goal anyway. Sneddon to Salmon. The two S's at the back. Go back to Ifoni. So far, Man City not created a little. I know you could attribute their loss today to the lack of a first-choice goalkeeper, but let's be real here. They've not created anything going forward. We made them look very, very average. And well, Bolton, he already has one assist. For a second, I thought he was going to get another. But that run there was not the most inspiring, was it? Darge, back to Pellegrino, who's now going to step up and give it into the midfield. The ball being brought forward here. Day, well, I thought he was going to get dispossessed by Lehman. The ball's gone past them both and Zhao Ad, the right back, he's now cutting inside. He hits it, it falls to Kobe Mainu, who shoots wide. That is very lucky. For like Man City, since I said, oh, they're not doing anything, now they are actually starting to do stuff. This is where it gets concerning. Although, Chelik, nice tackle there. Referee's on a yellow card. Give him a bucking. Disgraceful. Add that to the charges. 114 for that. That is match fit. Should be a red yellow card for that. That was disgraceful off the ball. They've still got it here, mind you. Can we get the ball? Can, can we get it? Can we get No, we can't. They, they're playing keep away right now, and it's not very fair. It's not very nice. I mean, there's a half-hearted attempt at a press from our players, but I'll be honest with you. It's not the most inspiring of presses I've ever seen, but... For a moment, I thought we were going to win the ball back. They're bringing it forward here. Badissa, Neto, massive tackle, but Darge still has it. There are players queuing up in the middle. Neto, he does some roaming. He does some playmaking. He doesn't do any bloody defending, though, does he? It's 2-1 Man City. I bring Neto and think, you know what, mate? You're going to have to do the job at roaming playmaker. And, well, that was just pathetic, wasn't it? Bolton's been turned inside out. They're going to make a film about that. And it's 2-1. Right, you know what? Just shout to man more. Just shout, demand more. Away against Man City, never an easy game. We're in a really good position with it. I mean, look at the match momentum. It was going so well. It's starting to go better now, though. Maybe the shouts worked. Bolton, please make magic happen. We need another goal. Make me relax, boys. That is not a good cross by him again. I know I have the low crossing instruction on, but come on, mate. You are allowed to kick it above, like, grass height. Lehman, a left back, lays it inside. Talarski, Lehman, that's a floaty ball. It falls towards Chelik. The Don's there. And football managers decided that I should be witness to that. Why show me that highlight? I'm fuming. Okay, Man City have changed their system. I saw the formation just change before the highlight began. I didn't even have a chance to react. But, well, if we get a goal as they go on the attack, that would make me happy, wouldn't it? Lehman. He's been a bit quiet this year as Lehman. Can he do anything here? The ball goes across everyone and Sam Faye's missed an open goal. Sam, that's why he started on the bench. That is an appalling miss, isn't it? If they go up the other end and score now, I'm going to be absolutely livid. Sam Faye, please don't tell me I'm going to live to regret you missing that. Harlan's bringing it forward. This guy's scary, isn't he? He's 36. He still averages a goal a game. Dodge hits it over. Oh, my word. I mean, at this point, I feel like the logical thing to do would be to time waste a little bit. But I also know this is football manager. So now that I've changed the time waste thing, they're probably going to score immediately. You know, we're on a different timeline now. There is a timeline somewhere in a parallel universe where I didn't hit um, time-wasting there. We're in the timeline where I did, and I know it's not a good idea. I know it's stupid. Don't really know why I've done it. Although, maybe... Maybe I'm a jeep. That's why I've done it. Tell you what, time-wasting is what has earned us that goal. I'll use the word earned 
lightly. You know what? We've never been behind in this game, although we have been gifted this here. What were they doing at the back? I know people are going to look and blame Seedon in goal, the youngster. That is not his fault, is it? It's a good finish by Diop, who's now on for a hat-trick. It's 3-1. That has to be game over now, and I'm just going to point out, Erling Haaland is on a 6.6. .6. A few years ago, he'd score hat-tricks against us here. He's been exposed as a fraud. Championship level in the year 20... What year, what 20 year are we in? 2030-something. 30 37! Oh yeah, it's the 1st of January. We really are living in the future. I mean, that result there is good. If we win our game in hand, we're only seven points behind them. And our goal difference isn't a million miles away from them either. We have still got Manchester United breathing down our necks. They win 4-1. Elsewhere, Arsenal mustered up a win. Chelsea drew. And Chelsea, you can see here, have played a lot more games. There are currently four teams tied on 36 points. Kind of glad we're not involved in that scrap. Apparently, Bailey, Salmon and Donald need a rest. You know what? They can have a rest after this. Diop, give him some praise. We have an FA Cup game against Newcastle, but we're not going to give you that because, well, we, we don't need to worry about the FA Cup. We've won that before, but one competition we've not won is the EFL Cup. And yes, we have been drawn against Championship Brentford and we should absolutely destroy them. But those are the two games upcoming that I am going to focus on here. I want to beat them. We've got them in a week's time. I'm going to go forward to that, and then I will talk about the takeover, what's happening with it, because all will become clear soon. Don't go anywhere. Okay, folks, game number two today, and let me talk about why I didn't mention the takeover earlier. It's because I was trying to sign Jude Bellingham. I was trying to sign Jude Bellingham on a free transfer, and he turned me down. And had I gone into details about the issues with this transfer, it would have revealed that the takeover never happened yet. Brian is still at the club. Will he make it to 10 years at the club? He's got to last another 13 months. The tycoon takeover didn't materialise. In fact, the club didn't even go under a transfer embargo. And what was a bigger kick in the teeth was the tycoon takeover failed and then the board scaled down the wage budget and the transfer budget. Uh, yeah, our transfer budget dropped by, I think, like 40 million. The wage budget got dropped as well. And it meant that even if Jude Bellingham had agreed to sign for us, I don't think we could have actually afforded him anyway. So maybe I avoided some heartbreak, but basically the ownership had knobs and I wanted to have some positive energy going into the Man City game. So I thought I'd just vent now. And now I'm just annoyed as we take on Brentford. Now we did also have that FA Cup game. It was against Newcastle. I played a really rotated team. Was a little bit of a gamble, but to be fair, the rotated team played really well. And Mateus, man of the match, two assists and a goal for this guy. He's been pretty good so far this year. I've not played him nearly enough, to be honest, in the Premier League, yet to make a significant appearance on off the bench once to even get a rating. In the Champions League, he has three goals in three. And what you might think, well, Jack Shirley, just play him in this game here. Championship Brentford, what an opportunity to play him. Uh, yeah, I could do that, couldn't I? But this is horrible. This is really mean to me. I kind of just want to try and play the best 11 I can, albeit the likes of Misiak and co. I'm not going to be available. In fact, I'm doing the shuffle here, realising that Alex is out, Misiak's out. Maybe I can justify playing Mateus. Maybe he deserves a chance to shine in a live commentary. Also, just a Reptar update. Um, potentially on his way on loan to Burnley in the Championship for a year. Uh, or rather, for the rest of the year. I think he'll probably tear up the Championship. I've given him some game time. Mm, he's not quite Premier League ready. Which I know when you spend £82 million on a player is mental. But yeah, he's... You, you, Burnley. Burnley's where he's going to find himself. You know what? Roger Rojas has played 20 plus games. I'm going to give him a rest. I'm kind of looking at the total appearances here thinking, are there players there that I want to give a break to? Ichikawa, you can come in for Donald. I'm a little bit concerned that Huari and Salmon have been playing a lot lately, but the issue I've got is all my centre-backs are, well, injured or part of the rotation crew. You know what? Sned and an NDIA at centre-back. Uh, I'm making all these changes, I realise. It's probably going to result in us now slipping up, isn't it, against a championship team. We should murder them. That is the intention. I'm hoping this will be the most recappy of recappy games ever, and the second leg is basically me just at half-time letting you know that we're 6-0 up and we're going to go to Wembley. Um, but yeah, football manager doesn't always work that way. Frank Lampard is their manager. I need to know more. Brentford are currently ninth in the championship. Their media prediction was sixth, and uh, Frank Kitt is their manager. Uh, he's got around a bit, hasn't he, over the years? Chelsea to Preston North End to Huddersfield, Stockport County, Reading, Sheffield Wednesday, Brentford. Um, it's quite an average career, isn't it? I say all of that, of course. If he now beats us here, that will go top of his resume, won't it? Right, let's not lose to Frank Lampard, please, lads. Ichikawa. 
Anderson Bolton into the box. Oh, tell you what, that was nearly an own goal inside the first five minutes. That didn't take long, did it? Uh, a goal up, that own goal that nearly happened. Uh, well, it resulted in a corner. We scored from the resulting corner. Uh, I didn't expect this to happen. Bolton headed it against the post. NDIA finishes it. Um, yeah, it's not looking good for Brentford. I mean, they've they've got 180 minutes across across two games to survive. They've lasted five. We're on the attack again. Bolton, show some mercy. Be nice, lads. Play kind or something. You know, be gentle. Diop inside. Lee Min dances past his man. Anderson, Ichikawa. We're playing at a tempo they can't keep up with here. Ichikawa, Lee Min. Can he get to the byline? There's options there. The D, the I was going to say the Don was one of them. I want to call him the Donkey. Can I call him the Donkey? He shot. It was blocked. Brentford live to fight another day. Or, or do they? Chelik free kick. Uh, that was a good save. You know what? Fair play that he's done well there. Every highlight is just their goalkeeper making saves, then him kicking up the field and us having another chance. Lee Min's bringing it forward here. Lee, I mean, that's just unnecessary, isn't it, from the left back? That's just mean. I mean, it's a great goal, but needless. I think what it is, is Lee Min has taken it personally that they've got the same coloured shorts as us. You know, he's not happy about that. The fact that, that we're matching. So he's decided he just wants to send them a message. The message has been sent. Just again, for the record, originally the plan today was to do Manchester United. And then that game got postponed. So I thought, you know what? What's the harm in doing Brentford? I feel like this might not be allowed on YouTube. I mean, it's very, very graphic, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's... There's a box I have to tick on YouTube when I upload a video that says this video was not made for kids. This, de I mean, I don't tick it ordinarily. I'm definitely not ticking it for this one. Michael Bolton, he is not child friendly. He whips it in. Mateus scores. It's free. It you know, I'm going to come back at halftime and just be nice. Okay, look, I said I wasn't going to come back until halftime. Mateus has scored a second goal. It wasn't that good. Bolton did get the assist, though. I have to show you this. Chelik. I mean, it's a great free kick. Why not save a free kick like this, you know, for a big moment in the Champions League or the Premier League? We don't need it when we're 4-0 up after half an hour against Brentford. Needless. Three minutes of added time at the end of the first half is going to come and go with 5 nil up. But to be fair, when you look at the XG, it's not that high. Half the match has been highlights. Half, literally. You know, since the free kick went in, we've been quite nice. We've not done much since. I'm pleased we've created loads. Oh, I probably should just make some sh sub, shouldn't I? A Reptar on for Diop, who's picked up a knock. Vasquez, you can come on as well for the Don, or Donkey. He needs a rest. Uh, do I get five subs? I do get five subs here. You know what? For the people. I'm a people pleaser. Sam Fay on for Chelik. I feel like at this point, I just want to take off all my good players so they can't get injured. I do feel bad for their left back. Like, Bolton's on an 8.2. Their left back's on a 5.7. He's had a horrible day. We have been gentle to them in the second half, though. You know, we, we could have gone out there and been brutal. What's happened here is the very football manager thing where you make a couple of changes, you praise a few of the players, and suddenly your team just decides, you know what? We're done for the day. I feel like at 5-0, we can afford to be done. Just as a reminder, there is a second leg, which I was going to do. I think I'll just come back at the end of the second leg, J just for the sake of Brentford. I, I feel bad. The ops aren't for six to eight days. That's a little bit of a relief. I was thinking it was going to be another injury. Uh, Bolton, man of the match. Uh, yeah, he played quite well, didn't he? Played quite well. Okay, we've got West Brom midweek. I will probably play a full-strength team in that game, then rest everyone up for Brentford and Wren just to rest up our players. I am going to come back at the end of the League Cup game against Brentford. Uh, we'll talk about that game and whatever's happened in it. Presumably we've won, or we've bottled it like I've never bottled it before. And I'll also let you know how we did against West Brom. But we already played West Brom this year. I don't really want to play them again in an episode. No disrespect to West Brom. Not very sexy. I think some of our players took it personally, you know, when we nearly bottled it against West Brom earlier on in the year. 7-1. Uh, yeah, Bolton got three assists. Yeah. Good win. Sadly, good win. Uh, Man City also won. So we're still just 13 points behind them. Yeah, I don't like being the team doing the chasing. Now, one other thing that I've got a minor issue with is I've got loads of players like Snedden asking for new contracts because the board took all the money when the takeover didn't happen. I can't give any of them new contracts. We're currently already over the committed wage spend. I feel like the next few months could be problematic if a load of players start asking for new contracts. 
I mean, there are players wanted. I don't really want to sell anyone, though. Anyway, you know what? That is a minor inconvenience in the grand scheme of things. We've got this second leg against Brentford. Unless there's some truly spectacular goals, I think we'll just come back at the end of the game. I want to make it to the Carabao Cup final. If you're wondering who awaits us, the answer is Arsenal. So, well, okay. Unless West Brom overturn a free goal deficit in the second leg, which does feel unlikely. Okay, uh, Brentford, they lasted... Two and a half minutes this game. I don't think that's an improvement on last time, actually. Uh, it is worth noting. I've played a lot of Football Manager over the course of the last two episodes. This is only the third episode of the season in January. For those of you a bit concerned that this season's going by quickly, obviously the Champions League knockouts are going to be coming up. We've got a Carabao Cup final. I mean, that we should now make it to. We're 6-0 up on aggregate. And there are going to be potentially some fairly big league games in our hunting down of Man City. So, yeah, expect plenty of matches upcoming. You know, I don't want you to feel like you're getting too detached from the save game with not frequent or enough updates. They are going to be coming just like the goals are coming. It's 2 0 after 10 minutes. We really are the. You know what? Cut to half time. Blood. I can't show this on YouTube. Just as I thought half time was about to come in, I was going to report back that it's currently 3 1 on the night. Uh, there's another highlight. Should we see if Sam Fay can add another? He's just scored from the penalty spot. We have been going forward a lot. To be fair, they did score a goal. <laughs> Uh, Neto, he scored the best goal of the game there. And because I know someone's going to ask Jack, how did you concede against them? Uh, here you go. Orovec, our former man, if I'm not mistaken, playing it inside. Yeah, that is a bit annoying not to get a clean sheet, but I mean, it's 8-1 on aggregate at halftime. I think we'll survive. This is the kind of game where I'm looking at things thinking, do I want to make any subs? But then I kind of remember all my main first team players, for the most part, aren't on the pitch. I kind of just want to keep this team on so that my main team stays fit. And also, it's a good confidence boost, isn't it, for all the rotated players and Michael Bolton, who's just on the pitch. Getting another goal. He's in a very good run of form at the moment. Okay, well, <laughs> I was about to say, full time in this game. They scored a few. Uh, Bailey Salmon scored another. It's 6-3. It's kind of been a classic in an unclassic kind of way. It's 11-3 on aggregate. I bet you didn't have that down on your predictions, did you? We've scored a lot of corners against them, I've noticed. Not that I'm going to complain, but... It'd be nice to score all these goals in the league. I say that. We beat West Brom 7-1 midweek. You know what? Just a good result. Let's look at the positives. We're into the final. And I know what some of you are thinking, Jack. Will you be drinking Carabao, you know, to celebrate the final? Absolutely not. I did it last year. Taste tested it. To mark us making the final of this competition it was bloody dreadful. However, what I can promise you is we are going to be back following deadline day, or maybe for deadline day. Uh, we've got Arsenal away and Liverpool at home with Everton nestled in between. Uh, they are fairly big games for us. I know we've got Barcelona in the Champions League. I will be playing the B team in that game. The Ch Champions League games literally do not matter for us at this point. The games against Arsenal and Liverpool, though, they might matter. Although we have also got Arsenal in the EFL Cup final. Is there such thing as too much Arsenal? Let me know down in the comments. Today's episode has been a little bit of a weird one, derailed by the fact that some fixtures got moved around, but ultimately, we've beaten Man City. We've made it to the Carabao Cup final. Yes, the Tycoon takeover hasn't happened yet, but you know what? We are racking up a little bit of debt, slowly but surely. Maybe Brian will decide to leave, and maybe a third Brian will come in to be chairman. I mean, probably not, but imagine if a third Brian did come in. Will we have a new Brian next episode? Will I have some money to spend next episode? You'll have to come back next time to find out. The club is broke. We have no money. We're second in the league. We're trailing Man City. And yet I'm still feeling optimistic. Maybe it's delusion. Have a lovely rest of your Tuesday. We'll be back tomorrow with Park to Prem action as always. Until next time, it's me, Jack. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.